right, Mark chapter 2. Uh, and it reads, And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together, so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic, who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was laying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Amen. Amen. Lord, we ask that you bless this service today. Bless your word. Cover us, Lord. Give us what we need to eat today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Now, y'all gonna have to deal with me. As the, every time I read this particular passage, this is one of my favorite passages to read. And every time I read this passage, I thought I think of a song. It's not a it's not a Christian song, y'all. Okay, it, it, it's not a born again song. Okay, but and, and this is going to be the title of my message because every time I read this, I think of this song. Okay, the title of my message is the title the title of my message is tear the roof off the sucker. Okay. <laughs> That, 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 that's, that's, <laughs> okay, she, you know, she's like, I don't know if you should say sucker. I was like, I don't know, I'm going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, yeah. <laughs> now, when I, when I, when I you know, I, I like this scripture because it, it is a powerful uh, message of faith. Uh, for and, and love for people one to another. Now, Jesus is in this house preaching, and these four men decided, because Scripture says it was their faith that, that caused Jesus to move. So these men are out there, and they hear Jesus is in town, and they decided they're taking their friend to Jesus. So they pick up his little bed and carry him to the house. They get there, and there's too much going on in front. So they get up on the roof, open it up, and drop their friend into Jesus. And Jesus said, because of your faith, you know, because of their faith, he healed this man. It doesn't say because of the man's faith. It was the faith of the four friends. So... I began to look deeper, and, I, and the more I re read this, the more just God just gave me. Just talked about it on the basic level. Then he went into spiritual level. Then, you know, we just was, was just talking about this verse. And there's a lot of things here. It doesn't get the names of the friends. But, I, you know, my names that I give them is character, perseverance, faith, and hope. You know, uh, these are his four friends that carried him. Uh, character being is they wanted to see him healed. You know, these were men, good men, who said, Jesus is here. Let's get him there, you know. Perseverance was willing to do whatever it took to get their friend to the healer, okay. So, so what, regardless of what it looked like, regardless of what, was the, what obstacles was there, you know, I, I kind of go, because my mind do crazy things sometimes. I kind of went to, you know, what if he was heavy, you know. I mean, it took four of them to carry his bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we don't know. So he could have been a big guy. He could have been whatever. But it says they picked up his bed and carried him. That's perseverance. Faith because they believed Jesus can heal him. You know, they could have said, you know what? There's too many people. You know, we don't know if he's going to do it anyway. But they said, no, we got to get this man to Jesus. And they expected him to be healed because they didn't stop. They said, mm -mm, if we get him to Jesus, he's going to get healed. Okay. 
those are just characteristics people, you know, as, as Christians, we should have perseverance, character, faith, and hope, yeah. and, and, and never wavering. So sometimes we get in those situations where perseverance is required, but we give up. You know, faith is required, but we don't believe. You know, uh, hope, but we feel it's hopeless. You know, sometimes we get in those situations and, and God is just seeing how far are you willing to go? How much do you really believe me? You know, we have dreams and aspirations and things that we want to do. And God is saying, I'm with you. I hear you. But do you really want that? You know, we hit that first obstacle and we go, all right, God, maybe it's not you. We turn around, go home. Could you imagine what would have happened if when they saw that the place was crowded after carrying that man, we don't know how far, and they got to the door, and instead of, instead of uh, 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 faith being there, doubt was holding them? Doubt mm -hmm. says, uh-uh, mm -mm. we can't get in there. You know? No, we, uh -uh. Or halfway on the trip, instead of perseverance, you know, uh, 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 I don't know, what's the opposite of perseverance? Laziness? The guy like having, I'm tired. <laughs> I don't feel like carrying him. You know, you guys go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> could you imagine that? You know, if if if, like I said, if unbelief was there instead of faith, and it's like, nah, man, you know, they probably wouldn't have got out the door. There was, a, <laughs> you know, so they go, like, right, we're gonna carry him. Nah, man, we ain't doing all that. Yeah, we always got somebody in our life like that. No, man, we we ain't got to do that. You know, how about you go check out, see if he really healing people, and then come back and get him, man. Yo, man, he heavy. <laughs> you know, we going to carry him where? <laughs> That's like a mile up. Man, you got to be crazy. I ain't even, you know, could you imagine if that would, this wouldn't be much of a story going on if that was the case, you know. So, so we look at the man who's being carried, you know. Uh, a paralytic is somebody who's paralyzed. Uh, uh, usually from the waist down is usually how they describe it. The thing about that, and, and, and we got to look at it from a, a bigger perspective, what, what the Lord told me was that because he was paralyzed, his legs, he had no use of his legs. Not that he did not have legs, he just couldn't use them. Okay? They just were non-functional. They were present but he couldn't do nothing with it. They were separated from the rest of the body. And as a result, his arms had to do what his legs were called to do. Okay, so you see somebody in a wheelchair, they have to, you know, their arms have to do what their legs were called to do. Okay, so uh, uh, in many of those cases, and, and because they didn't have wheelchairs back there, either somebody else would have to carry them around or they will crawl around on their, on their hands, you know, not being in a position that they should be, where they should be standing to receive, they're down on the ground because their hands have to do what their legs are supposed to do. You know, that, that, that's, that's a dysfunctional uh, uh, um, body. So if we have a bunch of, a room of believers and you have to say, is this a paralyzed body? Are the arms doing what the feet are supposed to do? You know, are the arms doing what the legs, are the arms carrying the body in ministry? You know, where that is, the, 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 that, that's what the legs are supposed to do. You know, the legs are supposed to have that function, to carry the church where it's supposed to go. And if the legs aren't functioning, then other parts of the body have to do what the arms are supposed to do. And then the whole body's not functioning because you can't get from God, you can't take from God when your arms are holding the body up. So you end up missing what God has because you're not in your proper position. Okay? You can't see as far as you could see because you're down here. So your vision is small. Because, because the body is not in its proper position. So he can only see as far as his arms can let them, and the arms are tired because they're always holding up the body. And the legs become useless because he's just dragging them around. But this man, 
had four friends. Character, perseverance, faith, and hope, who was willing to carry him to Jesus. Okay? Um, they was willing to uh, uh, get him to Jesus no matter what. Now, so they get, they, they're carrying him, and they get to the door. Okay? And they can't get in. So they had a decision to make. You know, now what's interesting to me is that they're at the doorway, and what the doorway represents is everything you can't change. Okay? Because people are all in the doorway. They're being blocked. They could do nothing about the situation. There was no room. You know, what was interesting to me was that nobody moved to let him in. You know what I'm saying? They see this and them trying to carry this crippled man to Jesus, and nobody said, you know what, move, everybody back out, get him, get him in there. They were like, mm-mm, I'm trying to get to Jesus too. <laughs> or, or, or I want to see what he's doing, because they said the Pharisees and Sadducees, they was, they was in there too. So many religious folk will block your way from getting to, to, to what you're supposed to get from Jesus. And they'll stand in, in your doorway to your blessing because they're just trying to see. They ain't there to, to be a blessing or nothing. They, they, they just watching to see what, what, what Jesus is going to do. In the meantime, the thing that they're trying to see is standing behind them. You know, the miracle they're trying to see is right there trying to get to Jesus, but they blocking because they're trying to see what he's doing. You know, that, 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 that's, folk, that's folk, that's church folk. That, that's, 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 you know, folk out there, you know, who don't see what you see, who don't have your vision. You know, who don't, who don't, they're, they're going to always tell you, you know, uh, you know, all right, well, you know, whatever. Or, they, you know, always, hey, man, you know, listen, I got this thing I'm trying to do, and, you know, I need a partner, I need somebody. Nah, man, I ain't, you know, I can't, I'm not going, you know. And then the same folk that come back later after you done did it, hey, man, you know what I mean, you, you still need that partner? You still need that, you still need somebody? No, nah, I don't need you now. <laughs> you know, then the same folk that come back later after blocking your, trying to block your, your way, trying to block your way to God, you know, they don't cry at your space, and, 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 you know, they usually don't want to see nobody else get, you know, because the Pharisees had some stuff, they had, they had their stuff together, you know, they, they, you know, they supposedly had the promise, and they, you know, so they knew they had some things working in their favor, but we ain't going to let this Cripple man come in, come through here. I'm sure some, somebody turned around and saw him back. You know what I mean? It's like you, you go to any places, you know, somebody saw, hey, I'm sorry, you can't get in, bro. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? We, we, we know you like that. We know you in this position, but you can't come in here, man. You know, we, we, we listening to the rabbi, you know, being religious, listening. They're trying to put action, they're trying to put words in action. They, these other people are just watching the word, you know? So, so we have the doorway. That's the stuff you can't change, you know. You know, you'll, be, you'll, you'll never be able to change what people think, you know. Don't worry about that, you know. Don't worry about how, you know, if, if you heard from God, you know, and you know God told you to do something, if you, told, if you know that he gave you direction, you know, and that's one of the things we've been talking about in prayer, hearing from God. That's one of our prayers. Make sure, you know, trying to hear from God. When you know God gave you a direction, it don't matter what people say. You know, if they're not saying something in favor, don't listen. You know, if they're not helping it move. I go back to the, um, to the Old Testament with Moses. And he had all these people. Now, God already told him the vision. You know, God already told him what he had to do. But it was getting to be a, a bit much for him. You know, he was he was trying his best to do what God told him to do. You know what I mean? But it was it was starting to kill him because he had thousands upon thousands of people that he was trying to minister to. You know, that was the first mega church. <laughs> you know, he had all these people out there in the wilderness trying to minister to all these people. You know, so his brother, his father-in-law had to come to him and say, hey, man, this is, what, this is what you do. You take people you trust and you divide them, divide the people up. And have these elders be over them, 
you know. So from this mega church, he meets smaller churches, you know, and that's the real mega church. But I'm not gonna get into that. But um, you know, so so because he knew he couldn't do it. So that was the, that was to help him continue the vision that God had gave him. He wasn't altering the plan. He didn't he didn't say, man, you need to send them people back, you know. Forget it, man. It's killing you. Send them back. You know, he said, no, this is what you do. You know, divide them up, you know, to that way and, 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 and you know, let them handle the, the problem, you know, the smaller problems. And the big problems they bring to you. You know, he didn't, he didn't change the plan. He just helped him move the plan forward. So if you got people in your life who are giving you advice and it's to help you move the plan forward, that's good advice. But the people who come and say, oh, nah, man, I don't think you should do that. Those type of people, you want out your life. You know, them people you want to remove. You know? And but that's when you know you heard God say something. Okay? Now if it's all if you still, I don't know, I think I might have maybe, I, I think God said, you know, then you might want to sit still until you know God said. Okay? When you when you're not sure what God said, stay still, keep praying, until you have confirmation that God said what he said. Then you move forward with what he, what, he, what he told you. So that's the doorway. You know, people blocking the doorway in the way. I'm also reminded of, you know, the woman with the issue of blood where she knew Jesus was in town too. Similar, similar type of scenario. And again, people were blocking the way. Funny thing is, most of these was Jesus' people. So even in that situation, sometimes spiritual folk can be wrong. You know, she said, no, I got to get to it. If I, could, if I could just, I understand y'all, you know, but if I can just get in touch to, you know, she's reaching through. And Jesus instantly knew, somebody touched me. You know, and it wasn't like, hey, Jesus, how you doing? You know, it wasn't nothing like that, you know, you know, because, because they were, you know, because people were, you know, because the, the, the uh, disciples were like, everybody touching you, Jesus, who, you know, it was this woman's faith that touched him, not just her physical hand that reached out, but it was her faith that drew power out of, out, out of, out of Jesus. You know, Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't, it didn't cause that miracle. She did because of her faith. Okay, she stepped up and said, mm -mm, if I can just, I just got to get to him, you know. Some of us got grandparents like that, you know. They, 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 they move mountains for us, you know. If you j just get to Jesus, you know, if you can just get to him, you know, and he will change your situation. Okay, so now these men carried this man onto the roof. Now, there's different interpretations of this roof. People say, oh, it was just a bunch of leaks and stuff, so they were just pulling it off, whatever. You know, I don't know. But it's, my, my Bible says they took off the roof and dropped the man in. You know? Now, what's funny to me is uh, the person who owned the house, you know, <laughs> could you imagine? Because at one, at one breath, he's sitting there like, yeah, Jesus in my house, y'all. Like, all these people here, in my house, Jesus in my house. What y'all doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, they sitting there, you know, he's enjoying all of this, and it's feeling like, I'm a blessed man, Jesus in my house. He had a hole in his roof by the time Jesus was gone. See, the key to that is, the, 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 the principle of that is, when you have Jesus in your house, it's going to cost you something. All right? See, you, 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 when Jesus comes in, it costs you something. You know, you're going to have a hole somewhere. You know, that's a piece of your, 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 your protection, keeping, the, you know, something that, 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 that only he could fix is, is, is that hole. And, you know, it costs you something. Something's going to be missing. Something is going to be, uh, 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 you, you're going to lose something when Jesus is in your, is in your house. I'm, I'm talking about you, the house now. You know, we're not just talking about buildings no more. When Jesus is in 
your house, you're going to lose something. Okay? When you invite him to come over, you're going to lose something. You know, your little defenses is going to come down. You know, that little pl place of protection, you might lose it. When Jesus comes into your house, you're going to lose something. Something is going to be uh, uh, not the same anymore. Thought I lost my page. <laughs> How far are you willing to go? You know, now we look at this, and honestly, I'm about done. Uh, how far are you willing to go for what you believe? You know, how far are you willing to are you are you willing to carry somebody for the cause of Christ? You know, some of us got people in our families that we've given up on. You know, I know I was one of those people. I told you before, my family kind of wrote me off. Oh, well, I they just ain't going to get saved. You know, everybody in my family was born again and, you know, everything. And they just kind of said, well, we tried with Andre. <laughs> you know, Lord knows we did, but he just ain't coming. So, we, Lord, we just. But my mom, she told me after, she said, you know what? When y'all was small, we carried you all up to the altar, altar and prayed over you. She said, and God told me that he would save each and every one of you. Now, my mom, when, when, I, when I came to Christ, my mom was sick. And funny, she was a sick one, but she was carrying me. That's another message. But she was, she was carrying, she, she was praying for me all of that all that time and she was ill to to where she had oxygen tanks and you know had to she could barely take two steps but when i came home that day and i gave my life to christ telling her i gave my life to the lord that is the first time in years i saw my mom jumping shouting running around the house oxygen tank over in the corner and she was Rejoicing because a promise was fulfilled. God did it. So many of us have given up on someone. Many of us have stopped praying. Many of us have, have stopped carrying that person. Get them here. Get them, no. Get them to Jesus. It is not about the building. Get them to Jesus. If you have to tear roof off, if you have to tear wall down, get them to Jesus. I can speak for myself when I say my life has not been the same. I can see things that I couldn't see before because there were, there, there's been a change in me. I'm like that man who was laying in that bed being carried by a sick woman in my case. God made me whole and now I can stand and I can see further now. I can see more than just the ground in front of me. I can see further now. I can see with his eyes now. Don't give up. Whoever you're praying for, whatever you're praying for, don't give up. Jesus is saying that I'm sitting in the house waiting for you. There's a crowd of folk in the door. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? 
get them in the house. God bless.